Hi, Christina here, founder of Liberate. I wanted to let you know that all of our amazing practitioners, healers, and intuitives are available for remote sessions. And we are continuously adding new classes, workshops, and meditations to serve you every week. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that we can help you liberate yourself. Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, I'm excited because we're going to be talking about the infamous pandemic causing COVID-19 from a Chinese um, medical perspective. And so today... We have Anthony Del Salvo with us, and he is an acupuncture, a Chinese uh, medical physician, and he has a lot of tips and tricks to not only help your immune system, but also make sure that if in the event that you do catch COVID, that there's some tricks and, and tips of how to recover faster and with ease and get back to a normal life and however normal that can be in this time right but Anthony welcome <laughs> hi thanks for having me and um, I'm very grateful for you sharing this space for me to communicate our experiences from Chinese medicine's point of view so yeah hello everyone and I hope you're all staying safe <laughs> well it's, it's needed and you know I think that there's a lot of cross information out there with different perspectives and a lot of people don't know what they can trust and what they can do. And I feel that so many people are living in this uh, aspect of being powerless instead of taking power over over their body, over their health, and over their life. Yes, yeah. Um, a tremendous amount of information is being distributed everywhere thanks to our fantastic te te technology and social media, right? But what is correct what is not correct and uh, there's a lot of conflicting information between even doctors you know doctors have always argued and uh, defended their points of views you know ever since medicine's been around but now as the public we're tapping into their conversations yeah and so that can really bring a lot of anxiety and misinformation because they're still working and figuring things out that's just the nature of medicine and science yeah i it's mean a, it's, an, it's never it's concrete it's a new virus too, so I mean, it's not like it's been around for you know decades, and there's a whole bunch of uh, data on it. You know, the data is being right. compiled as we go, and we're learning more and more things that we're going to get into a lot of detail, like mm -hmm. the long haulers and the short. You know, like in all of these mm -hmm. different aspects, and and it seems like every time I turn on the news or get information, there's more and more symptoms being added to <laughs> that. It's yes. just like this ever-growing, expansive blob of the effects of COVID. <laughs> yes, and I'm glad you're talking about that right now because that is, um, that is something that traditional Chinese medicine excels at. It has been its kind of way of helping the body because you treat what you see, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the signs and symptoms have never really changed when it comes to the way that the organs are affected and their symptoms and what we see in the body. So when it comes to a classification of this virus, it is considered a damp virus at its core in okay. Chinese medicine terminology. And so the damp virus can get to a hot state or a cold state, depending on what's going on. And a lot of that is involved with the environment. For example, in the summer months now, the warmer areas, it becomes more warm damp and then hot damp. But in the winter, it's going to get more cold damp. Okay, so what does that mean for, like, a layman? <laughs> uh, well, uh, for us, it, it means that uh, dampness, if you think about it, everything that happens in the macrocosm happens in our microcosm. They've okay. observed that over the millennia. And they've been very scientific about it, too, and how they identify what's going on. Uh, and the patterns repeat themselves. They don't change for some mm -hmm. reason. And so, and they've empirically have tested this. And what that means is, like, damp presents itself as having foggy memory, sluggishness, low energy. You can have diarrhea from damp. You can also have constipation from damp. You can have difficult breathing from damp. Your memory is a little bit uh, like the foggy memory as well. Uh, and then also dampness, it settles, it's heavy. You know, you can have heavy limbs from damp and weak muscles, right? Your muscles get heavy and damp. And so uh, it 
then transforms into more pathogenic factors that are more serious, which is phlegm. So that's what we're seeing in the pneumonia that comes out of this. When you have damp, it then transforms to phlegm. Damp is created by the spleen in Chinese medicine. Okay. And then from there, the spleen in the path in the ideology of like the pathways of, of, of Ch that Chinese medicine has understood is damp created in the spleen is sent up to the lungs where phlegm can get created. And that's what we see in the pneumonia cases. Yes. Is that it's going up into the lungs and it's causing difficult breath and then when it stays in there, it gets even heavier and more damp and turns into phlegm. So it becomes hard for you to breathe. It becomes hard for blood circulation in the lungs. And so... And so when you say damp cold, does that mean that when it's cold and damp, or when you're cold and damp, it's a better environment for the virus? Yes, exactly. So anytime you're, if, you, if, if it's become more cold, damp, um, you have conditions that help it thrive and conditions that have, uh, you know, help eliminate it or weaken it. Mm -hmm. So when you have air conditioning running, that's creating cold in the environment, you're breathing that in that can create your body to be cold. Or if it's the winter months, it's going to be cold. You can also have cold damp already in your body, you know, uh, just from your general health. Uh, and so, which brings up the point of like some people who have been getting sick, uh, who are relatively supposed to be healthy, athletes and whatnot, you know? I hear a lot of these stories and they're like, why did that person get sick? Well, if they were to be examined by a, a TCM physician, most likely they had dampness in their body already. Mm. And usually and what, that comes from a weak spleen. So a weak spleen causes dampness Correct. in the body. Correct, yes. And sedentary you know, uh, work. So it's a little bit of both, but the, at the core of it is, is a weak spleen. Okay. And you can be a healthy person, you can eat right all the time, but you may have a pre-kind of existing condition in Chinese medicine. Maybe you're born that way, or it is developed over time because you're extensively working all the time or thinking too much. Mm. A lot of heavy thinking and worry also affects the spleen negatively. It weakens the spleen chi, and then dampness can occur as a result. So the mind and the body are inextricably linked in Chinese medicine. In order to help the mind, we treat the organs, and the organs nourish the mind. That the makes brain. sense. So, and what are some, you know, it will. Let's first. I have one question. Would that mean, you know, so everybody keeps on talking about when it comes to the fall or when it comes to the winter, mm. we're going to go through a massive resurgence of this, even though it seems like it's never went away yet. So, you know, they keep on talking about the second wave. We're still in the first wave, and I don't think the first wave is going away. But because of this damp cool, when we go into the fall and the winter, would you think that the spread or the effectiveness of the impact on the virus may become greater? Yes, it, it, the conditions are more hospitable for Okay, the because virus, right now yeah. you're seeing, at least like in LA, currently we're having a lar lar larger caseload, but there's a lot less people in the hospital. You yes. know, and yeah. so where it seems Correct. like it's a lot more milder symptoms. But then, you know, I was trying to think about the different aspects of when New York happened. It was cool mm -hmm. and it was damp because yes. it was like rainy season. Right. Yes. You know, it was spring and it was it was cool. And, you know, the temperature and they just got hit in, you know, s snow plowed. Right. Yes. You know, same with Italy. Italy's environment is very similar. Ah, so that, okay. that that makes that makes a lot of sense because I was trying to think. I was like, are we having a different strand? Are we different? You know, different aspects, but sort of too, because the virus did mutate. They confirmed that, and mm -hmm. so when we were discussing, uh, Master Yu had been in conversations with the doctors out of Wuhan, you know, as early as December and January, just constant communication. Their symptoms that they identified, the integrative Chinese medicine doctors there, uh, changed slightly when it got to Italy and also here. Yeah. So well, I hear that it mutates about every six weeks is what they're finding to some level, but the major mutations yes. are, yeah. you know, a little bit more extreme. So let's go back a little bit, you know, on the spleen, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so 
from your perspective, what are some things that, like, if there was one thing that people could take away from this, what I'm hearing at this stage, and we're going to get to a lot of takeaways because see all your little gizmos and gadgets <laughs> here, and there's, uh, I, I had the pleasure of having a session with Anthony, and he's truly incredible. I mean, when you talk about, like, a appearing healthy person I think that I take pretty good care of myself and I'm healthy but I've been going through a lot of uh, stress and transformation in my life and he puts boom boom two needles in here pops one in my head and I almost faint because I'm so low on on chi and life force in my body so <laughs> you can you can look in and in, in exhibit a certain way but it doesn't mean that underneath things aren't going on so I mean don't think just because you're eating right and you're exercising right that everything's perfect inside you know maybe there's other steps that you should take or that you could take away from this or some some uh, tools and techniques that you can pass on to some of your friends and family um, but with that, like, what would be one of the aspects for helping the spleen be stronger? Yes. Um, well, first, uh, the foremost, probably the most helpful thing because of the, say, damp virus nature of this, cold damp especially, is hot water. So okay. That's why I have this cup to illustrate to everyone. Um, and we tried very early on to communicate this to the public. Uh, we have it on our blog, an article explaining the necessity of drinking hot water to cause diaphoresis, as we say in Chinese medicine, releasing the exterior. Mm. And so this is a method that is the first step when any type of virus, whether it's a flu or a cold, uh, it, it affects the body. We treat it with acupuncture and Chinese herbs at the initial stages to help release the exterior, as we call it. Well, what do you do when you don't have access to acupuncture or Chinese herbs, and you know, especially a physician, because you need the guidance of a physician for that? Uh, you can drink hot water. It's the same mechanism of action, and mm. it's free and readily available for anyone, no matter how remote you are. You can still boil hot water somewhere. And what do you mean by releasing the exterior? Yes, so in Chinese <laughs> medicine, um, we have different levels of pathogens and how they affect the body. And the outer exterior is our, our defense mechanism we call Wei Qi, all right? And this defends ourselves and protects our body from you know, the environment around us, you know, which is our skin, basically, right? Okay. There's a certain level in the skin that protects us. It's part of our, um, our, our immune system. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we release the exterior in Chinese medicine, it, it, they classify it as, as releasing the virus out of the body. Does it technically do that? That's still up for debate. But the results are effective and proven over and over again. And what it does is it helps the immune system strengthen its resources. That's, mm. That is confirmed. You know? So when I have patients... Um, you know, when I advise them to drink hot water, it's not a concept that is, is really something easy to grasp, but it, it, as simple as it is. So I'm always asked, can I put lemon in it? Or can I put some spices in it or something, right? Cause yeah, because most of the time you hear, at least like growing up in the United States, when you get a cold or a flu or something like mm -hmm. that, it's hot water with lemon and honey, yes. <laughs> right? You yeah. know, that's like the little tincture that people are told yeah. to drink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, however, we want to use it in a very medicinal purpose by itself because water is a neutral element. And we want to add a neutral element, but we want to raise your core temperature because it is a damp virus. And in order to fight the viral load, your core temperature needs to rise. Mm. Okay? And so when you drink hot water, it raises your core temperature, and then you can sweat. And you just break a little sweat. It's not like profuse sweating, because profuse sweating is actually can cause a negative effect on you. And it is very different than going in a steam room I was just going to ask you that. Yes. I was like, should everybody just go to the sauna? Well, I think all the gyms are closed, but yeah. you know what I mean. If you had a home sauna, you know, you can still incorporate the two, but you only go in there long enough to cause a sweat, but you need to be drinking water while you do it because if you are just sweating, you are losing vital body fluids, which is mm -hmm. very important in Chinese medicine. And if you are a female, your body fluids are very important because of the menstrual cycle and the loss of blood regularly. Uh, you need to retain this. And so um, when you drink hot water, you're adding something to your body to make yourself sweat. Hmm. And the, the best case in point is some patients are on medications that 
prevent them from sweating naturally, and they, they can actually overheat if they exert themselves. Well, we have patients who I've helped with that. They drink hot water, they're still able to sweat. Mm. It takes them a little longer, but they still do it, and it helps their symptoms reduce. And so this is the, literally the first measure that anyone can take at any onset of symptoms, sore throat, loss of taste or smell, uh, fever, even if it's low grade, diarrhea, constipation, body aches, the foggy memory, the low energy, drinking hot water, and you can do it uh, several times through the day. I was just going to ask you, like, how often yeah. should you be drinking hot water? You can drink it through the day. There is no, there is no danger to yeah. doing that. There is a danger, obviously, when people go to the extreme. When you drink too much water regularly, that causes something else. But this is not that case. You're not, you know, you, you can drink it a few times a day. And if you have trouble sweating, some people do, some elderly do. Mm. And this is safe for elderly, it's safe for pregnant women. You drink hot water and you wrap yourself up in a blanket, like say a heated blanket, and you try to get hot for 15 minutes until you just break a little bit of sweat talking to you right now and drinking this hot water, I'm already just having a little sweat. Yeah. And so this is helping my body stay healthy, help the dampness in my body, because this is how the mechanisms work. Great, so that's, a, that's one of the ways. Um, is there any type of other things that can be done for improving the spleen? Yes, um, that comes down to Tui Na, which is Chinese medical massage. And so I have my legs crossed here. We have uh, acupuncture points that help with that. Okay. Right? Um, and so we, we push along these channels of the spleen, which are on the medial side of the okay. inside of your tibia bone here. And can you just push in here? Yeah, it's a little difficult to describe in this kind of interview process, but we have videos on our site for that. Um, okay. But you can also speak to your local Chinese medicine physician or acupuncturist and ask them for their advice. They're more than happy to give it to you. Um, we all want everyone to be well, and we want to do our part in helping the community. It's very important that our community knows how to help themselves. Yeah. So the only way we can get through this is that we have and are aware of our medical options because Western medicine is not the only type of medicine on the planet created by human beings. There are many other systems, and if you can learn a little bit of everything, then you have a better chance of survival. Yeah. So. And you can take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you have to follow every single Correct. thing fully. As long as it works, yeah. that's the thing. You know, um, this Chinese medicine does work, and it's not something to kind of go back to your point about pandemic and being something new. It's a novel coronavirus. Chinese medicine has been dealing with pandemics for centuries, <laughs> several thousand years, and they've been systematically recorded. You know, we had hot pandemics, and there was a whole medical annuals created just for that, like their experiences, the formulas, the acupuncture points to deal with it. Then there was a cold type pandemics period, and they have the same thing. They have recorded very methodically how to help people through this. It's not to say that it's like you don't prevent yourself from getting sick entirely. Yeah. There's nothing on the planet that will prevent you from catching a virus. But it is how well can your body react to the virus, how fast can it react, and how quickly can you help it clear the symptoms that accumulate. Yeah. Depends on your survival, you know. So they have a lot of experience with this. And so it, at the end of the day, we're adapting very fluidly with this virus and helping our patients recover. So um, we've been dealing with telemedicine for our patients and Chinese herbal formulas mm -hmm. since March. And so we've helped over 100 cases with no hospitalizations. Granted, that's a small sample size and everyone is varied in between. But every single patient we help, they get a customized formula because everyone comes with a pre-existing condition in Chinese medicine. It's, you know, just yeah. whether it's diabetes, polycystic kidney disease, COPD, they're pregnant or something else, they have brain trauma or they have another health condition. Um, yeah, they're, we they're starting, accommodate. Their starting yeah. point is different. So the, to get their, them in balance, to get their yes. system working the so, best, mm -hmm. you need to treat whatever it is that was off balance previously. Yes, and combine to help the immune system to support itself attacking the virus. 
because it's not directly attacking the virus. And there's still research and data that is showing some effects of that in Chinese medicine coming out of China, where they showed it against MERS and SARS initially. Uh, you know, there is data showing some elements of that having an effect on the virus, but that data is still inconclusive and needs to be further studied and analyzed and peer reviewed. That's another story. However, we do still show progress with our patients and survival rates are higher yeah. so far when those are taken into consideration because we're not actively attacking the virus, we're supporting the immune system and the issues that arise, whether it's fluid accumulation in the lungs, there are herbs in Chinese medicine that are proven to activate pneumocyte activity, drain lung fluid, and actually help the recovery process because when you get fluid in your lungs, you have fibrosis that occurs, blood stasis, blood clots can occur, and this is what leads to complications after. Hmm. We can segue later about the long haulers and how Chinese medicine helps with that. Yeah, So, absolutely. <laughs> now, one of the other things that, you know, of course, this is all, these are some things that you can do that build your immune system. So in the event that you are exposed and that you catch the, mm -hmm. the virus or any other, you know, I mean, map this over to it other aspects too or other cold damp viruses yeah. We're and coming stuff. up on cold and flu season yeah. right in, in the so, winter so this doesn't have to just be you know for covid this can be for all of these others and just for your immune system in general um but you know whatever what, you know there's a lot of controversy that are out there about these little things here Yes. mass and this is you know one of the ways in the defense mechanisms for uh preventing and not spreading the virus. Uh, can we talk a little bit, you know, cause I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, if they wear the mask, it's gonna cause them to pass out or they're breathing in their own carbon dioxide or the mask is actually causing more harm than good. And then, you know, or you hear that masks aren't even helpful, or that they're irrelevant, you know, and then some people are saying, no, they really do work and they're really supportive. And, you know, especially if you have it, that you're not gonna spread it on to others and all of this other stuff. So there's so much information on masks and, confusion uh, for the mm -hmm. people. So can we talk a little bit about them Absolutely. from your perspective? Yes, um, from a Chinese medicine perspective, yes, masks are very important, okay? Uh, they reduce the amount of the ability to spread the virus towards others and also protecting you uh, to a certain extent. The data is still being run consistently to try to figure this out, you know, between uh, aerosol engineers and medical doctors and combining these teams together to figure this out because everyone wants to more conclusive evidence but it still shows that it does help so please wear a mask uh, we know there are a lot of other complications as you mentioned and those are still valid i don't want i don't like to see how people are uh, made to feel bad that you know they are getting anxiety when they wear a mask. Some people are triggered by PTSD when they see masks or wear them because of other medical PTSD reasons. Those are legitimate. You know, anxiety is a real thing. In Chinese medicine, we address it as well because it affects breathing. When you do have anxiety, it binds your chi. And binding your chi here in the chest will restrict breathing, the breathing muscles that help you. So are you kind of saying that the anxiety that people have when they're wearing a mask is actually what's causing them to feel like they can't breathe, not necessarily the mask causing them to not breathe? Correct, yes. Okay. And, and there are ways to help that. Now, how do... I, I know that we talked a little bit right before this, so I know that you have this little device thing that, oh, yes. uh, that shows oxygen levels. This is a pulse oximeter, and as I wear my mask... And I, we can, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, we'll keep it on just for a little bit. Yes. I think to illustrate a point of how much oxygen is going through and that you're breathing in yes. with the mask on. And maybe even, you know, once you take it off, does that amount go up or does it re remain the same, right? right. You know, yes. so that people can have this awareness of in a calm, relaxed state, are you able to breathe comfortably and efficiently through a mask and because that's one of the biggest things that is going on right now 
Now, you'll probably see this on social media, some doctors and nurses, they're kind of trying to show the public, like, look, you can wear this mask all day long and your oxygen saturation levels will be uh, normal. Like right now, mine is at 99, okay? Uh, and those are in healthy limits, right? Uh, so, and at some time it drops down to 98, 99. It depends on my breathing pattern and whatnot. But when you- But you're talking through the mask right now, Correct. which is exerting energy mm -hmm. and, you know. Correct, talking and you know, the people who exercise and train in masks, who have been triathletes and everything, they do that. You know, yes, there is arguments, you're doing that to help retain CO2, but there's a limit to that still. Because if you were to really cut off all of that, you, you would pass out. Right? Uh, and there's also people who pass out because of anxiety. And so this is a uh, thing that happens in Chinese medicine. We identify someone passing out as the qi binds up and the clear yang qi can't get to the brain. Mm. We, it is a defense mechanism of the brain to pass out so that it doesn't further you know, deoxygenate your cells. So um, what what I'd like to share, though, is that you know, if you are feeling like anxiety and everything, um, please still be respectful of others. It's hard when you're having an anxiety and panic attack. You know, distance yourself and you know, try to get some breath going and whatnot. But we have some acupuncture uh, or acupressure points that we do to help with anxiety, and that starts here in the center of the chest. Okay. This is the Ren 17 point, uh, Dan Zong, which means literally center chest. It's right way in the sternum here right between the nipples on level. And if you uh, are stressed, this point is going to be tender and sensitive, all right? Yeah. That Mine tenderness, hurts. yeah, <laughs> that tenderness and pain does not mean that you have any damage at this tissue or this bone. It is a direct reflection of the disharmony in the body for what this point represents, which is a major chi point. It's actually at the front point of our pericardium. Uh, in Chinese medicine, and it's also a major qi influential point. Okay. So when we massage this, just massaging that on myself, I have an involuntary uh, respiration. It just causes that to unbind, you know? And so at the moment, my oxygen saturation fluctuates. It goes up from 98 to 99 when I do that. So why don't everybody, while you're sitting at home or you're watching this, grab this point and just wiggle back and forth on it for a minute yeah. and see if it... You will feel the indentation here in the sternum. And if you, you don't feel like you're in the right spot, explore. Go a little higher or a little lower and you'll find it. And yeah, it'll be tender if you've been yeah. stressed out lately, which a lot of us have been, myself included. I mean, we're all human and we're all dealing with something enormously stressful right now on many levels, right? So, so you now you're still at 99. I'm too. still at 99. I haven't decreased at all. What's fascinating is you notice my heart rate has increased. Yeah. Am I exercising? No, absolutely not. Yeah. This is allowing for increased vascular, you know, kind of movement, you know, from from uh, from all of your, you know, your your heart pumping because, you know, influencing the pericardium. This is very helpful for, you know, when you're having, you know, some of the symptoms. Um, the other thing that I like to share is scratching your head. We have this thing which is called head gua sha, which I had a video, I showed you that already. Yeah. And so I have a comb that I use, but you can still use your fingers if you don't carry one around. And I just go around and I touch the top mm -hmm. of my head and push on it. And those are also sensitive too, if you have an imbalance in the body. And this helps to calm you down. There's actually a whole method that I go over where you, you, you're combing your, your scalp down in all directions because you want to send your chi down. It is a great way to balance the body, to send your chi down and to calm things. So if anybody is feeling a little bit of stress or anxiety or you're feeling like you can't breathe due to wearing the mask, a lot of it could be in your mind, it could be different kind of um, reactions that you're having even on the non-conscious level, but these are two tricks that you can take with you of releasing some of that stress and pressure mm -hmm. in your system. Now, there's another thing before you take off your mask oh, that you were talking sure. about uh, <laughs> that to showcase whether your mask is effective. Oh yes, very important. And uh, we, had, we had tried to communicate this at the very beginning 
So obviously, look, the mask is not 100% pr pr protective. Nothing on this planet right now is 100% protective. It's just a matter of minimizing the risk the most possible, right, from all different areas. So we have a lighter test to just make sure that your mask is adequately protecting others and yourself, and we call it the lighter test. And so whether you're making your mask at home, you buy it from someone else, or you have a, a surgical mask, KN95, you can test if you can blow out this lighter from a small distance with a hard breath, then your mask is not adequately protecting. And you might need a filter or you might need to double up or get another one. And so you can, you can test yours. I think you have your lighter over there and see if it passes the lighter test. And you just need to be a little bit in front of your mask. Yeah. So, so yeah. maybe I need to double up on mine. <laughs> Because, right, we, we do that blowing out because that would uh, mimic a sneeze, right? And that yeah. velocity of air that comes out. That's what we need to protect is the particles as much as possible stay here and not affect the other person. Got so. you. And okay. so far, everything's been good. Still steady so we'll at 99. So a, a few minutes with it. And so just showing with the cloth mask that, that Anthony is wearing that indeed his oxygen levels are staying up. So, you know, please everybody, you know, wear a mask, especially if you think that you've been exposed so that other people um, don't get the exposure and go through this, you know, all the symptoms and have everything else of catching it or have the possibility of catching it. Uh, and then, you know, there is some mild protection for yourself as well with the mask, depending on what type you get. But a large portion is what I'm learning or that I've learned is that it's more about protecting others from mm -hmm. you, you know? It, yes. it, wouldn't that be correct? Yes, yes, yes and, indeed. And, and so please, wear a mask. Don't be selfish. And, <laughs> and with that being said, let's talk about some other ways that... Um, other tips and tricks about, you know, kind of mitigating risks or healing mm -hmm. or anything else that you want to share yeah. about COVID? Uh, it, it's a good time to talk about some of that because, look, we're in this interview environment. We're trying to keep distance still. Um, we don't have any active symptoms, uh, which we checked, but we also have air uh, circulating in the room, which is important, which is what I'd like to talk about when... Um, which is fine now with the climate, you know, um, but it is important to have fresh air circulating because they are the particles that are in the air when someone is sneezing or coughing, right, or, or breathing out. Uh, and so when you can circulate the air, then you re also, again, reducing your risk. Okay. Um, we don't recommend running air conditioners unless there is a proper HVAC system with even like UVC lighting, you know, to yeah, cause I would think clean that, that all of that. When the air goes into the AC, it's a wet climate. I mean, if anybody's been by an AC unit, it has these ice chunks that mm -hmm. form and it's really like water and sometimes there's drips happening yes. and then it's cold. So if it's a cold, damp, isn't that the AC is like cold and damp? Yes. So that is an issue with uh, the the virus spreading in areas that are in hot climates, but they're spreading in areas that are around air conditioning, hospitals, senior centers, and whatnot. Mm. And so, um, you know. Which makes sense why they're allowing outdoor dining, but not indoor dining. Yes, and uh, with outdoor dining, with fine. outdoor dining, it's still important to keep some distance because people are having conversations. They're talking, yeah. they're projecting, saliva is getting spit out accidentally, and um, please, you know, observe physical distancing when it comes to that, you know, for yeah. the safety of everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, you got to think with your heart and kindness uh, in order for all of us to really work together to get through this. You know, we're, we can't be individualistic, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, with that being said, you want to minimize that the best that you can. But then also the massive exposure and the different risk that there might be a really strong likelihood that you do catch this at some point in time. And, you know, yeah. um, one of the points or at least one of the aspects that I want to get across in this podcast is that there are solutions and there's ways and treatments so that you don't have to be so fearful, still be preventative, still take those precautions to mitigate getting it. But in the event that you do get it, 
know that we can heal and we can get over this and that there are different forms of treatment. Yes, and you will notice, and a lot of the viewers out there will notice, if they've ever had symptoms or even had mild cases or suspected symptoms, unless you're in danger, they're asking you to isolate at home. Yeah. And so this is why I'm really grateful to be here to explain a lot of these things because what can you do at home? Yeah. You know, uh, besides the typical Western medicine uh, approach, because those are still I very isolating um, in their approach, you know, whether it's ibuprofen or antihistamine uh, or, or any other kind of, uh, uh, of say, antiviral drug that is prescribed to you. Uh, Chinese medicine doesn't take such a finite uh, approach to treating the you know these you know the way that these chemicals are. Mm -hmm. you know, in Chinese herbs, they are formulated like uh, an orchestra. You know, different parts that synergistically work together to help the whole or a certain area of the body. Uh, because there is too many things going on that we still don't know about in science. Yeah, and then we also can't isolate, um, well I can segue into that a little later when I talk about Chinese herbal medicine, but I brought this out because this is moxibustion, the herb is Aie mugwort, ah. uh, and this has been used uh, during pandemics since uh, millennia in Chinese uh, history. Uh, so we burn this because it is now studied, uh, well documented, that the, the fumes, or the smoke from the IA, when it's burned, actually help to attach to viral and bacterial particles in the air. And so we burn this in the clinics when we have, you know, during high traffic times and sometimes in between, well not sometimes, in between patients to help with that, those lingering particles in the air. Ah. The, they do this in hospitals in Asia, uh, in Korea, Japan, mm -hmm. Malaysia. And it feels good. Taiwan, <laughs> China. But they have designated areas, they have proper ventilation. So the thing that, about IA is that it's hot and it's drying. So again, damp. What do you do when something is damp, mold and whatnot? You need to dry it out. Mm -hmm. And that is, again, that whole concept of just the basic elements of like what do you you know macrocosm microcosm of how things interact and where would somebody get that so th these are sold at chinese uh supply shops uh acupuncturists and chinese medicine physicians sell these uh, i believe you can even buy them on amazon um there's different varieties these are not expensive a box of, of the 10 or 20 can be around you know like maybe uh, 50 cents for a stick or or so the cautions about this is people who have respiratory problems or asthma, they can be bothered by the smoke. Like, mm -hmm. look how it's coming into my face right now. Um, and how long do you burn it for? Like, so that yes. it kills the amount of particles that it needs to. So what I recommend is, uh, I don't have scissors with me, but I usually just chop off a little piece about that. So that's maybe an inch. Okay. You know, I cut it so I don't have to put it out constantly and I just put it in a safe dish and I light it on fire and let it burn. And so I let it go around the room and sometimes I fan it around, you know, the popular thing with sage, you go around the room and you can burn it. You can do the same thing and walk around your environment. It can be at office, it can be at home, you can do it at the beginning of the day, during the day or the end of the day. Mm. But once you burn it and let it go around and settle for a little bit, you still need to air out your environment because this will dry out the environment and it can't cause issues with breath. Yeah. Nevertheless, even in a healthy person, okay? Um, the thing though, uh, what is important is that uh, when it comes to mugwort, uh, it's, it's in the pharmacopoeia of Chinese medicine. So we actually have it in other herbs and formulas that does a different thing. Uh, it's also done on areas of the body. You may have experienced this in Chinese medicine okay, which warms up the body, okay, again, dealing with something that is damp, mm. you know, warming the body, warming, warming your center and whatnot. You may have been prescribed that by an uh, acupuncturist or Chinese physician. If you've had cold, helps with cold in the uterus for female patients or whatnot, uh, cold, damp arthritis joints, it can help manage symptoms. Um, it is not a cure for anything, but it is, again, just another tool that you can help yourself with. I like it. All right. Should uh, 
We'll see if uh, Mikael's can put it out for yeah. us. Well, what I do is, here, let me show you on camera. I, here's the water. I'm not going to drink it anymore because it got too warm, uh, cool. So I just, you can cut it off or just go right ahead and put it in water. It is very important that you all understand that. Do not let this sit burning. It will burn all the way through and it is very hot. So it will burn through some materials if you leave it unattended. So please put it out properly. You can cut this off and again, dispose it in water. It'll be very difficult to relight this again once it's been put out with water. Some people use sand instead, yeah. but just cut it off when you're ready to use it again. And that's why initially I suggest just cut it here. Uh, when you like, you know, you're starting a new piece, just cut a little inch off and just put it in a little uh, dish and light it on fire. That yeah. way you don't have to worry about putting it out more. Like a little cone inset. Yeah, that's it. So now it is safe. Nice. And then I guess that gets into the segue of different types of herbs and, yes. uh, you know, especially since mugwort could also be uh, used as like an internal herb, right? Yeah, yeah, for uh, some uh, bleeding issues and, and blood related uh, problems. But um, I guess to segue into Chinese herbal medicine, I can explain uh, we've been helping patients uh, with COVID symptoms, uh, positive uh, having positive tests and negative tests. But for us in Chinese medicine, we have our category of symptoms that are very clear for what is potentially COVID. Okay. Uh, so we don't necessarily rely on the test or the validity because there's a lot of false positives on the test. They're still working out the blood serum test, the antibody tests and, yeah. and whatnot, right? Um, but when you have symptoms, you have symptoms for us. It's very clear. We see on the tongue, uh, when we do our telemedicine, we can't touch pulse. We also have our list of questions. So we've been dealing with this uh, with our patients and seeing the changes. You know, one patient is different than the next. Uh, yeah, some and, are a little similar. Some have the textbook. Some don't. They just have one or two symptoms or just one. And what are some of those symptoms to go through? Like the, you mm -hmm. know, because there's now there's so many different symptoms. But when you come across it, what are the symptoms that you're looking for? Yes, uh, it's well, it's a little of, a bit of a long list. Uh, well, at least like the top ones, you know. Yeah, of course. So obviously, fever is number one. Uh, sore throat, uh, loss of taste or smell. If there's any diarrhea that has occurred recently, mm -hmm. uh, which is a tricky one, right? Because you don't know if you had bad sushi or something else <laughs> that wasn't cooked properly. But usually you can tell, it, or I can when I ask questions, because you know it's detective work. You know yeah. you have to go back and figure out what's going on over the last few days. Uh, sometimes it's it's uh, flank pain here in the back because the muscles. Uh, it's fogginess in the brain. All of a sudden, low energy. And then we're not talking about like you've been working all day long and then you get tired. We're talking about like afternoon. All of a sudden, you're just like, man, I gotta lay down and take a nap. You mm -hmm. know, one o'clock in the afternoon and you're just tired. Yeah. That's a red flag for us, even though you're having no other symptoms. Mm -hmm. That's a sign for spleen problems or spleen pathology in Chinese medicine. And so um, uh, a few other things, you know, they've, with the children there's been some COVID toes and some rashes that have been showing up. Uh, and then, um, you know, those are kind of what we, we look for, all right? Yeah. And, uh, and so from there, we provide a risk assessment in our telehealth services to figure out what's going on, how are you? And then literally for everyone I've talked to, the first thing I ask them to do is drink hot water and make themselves sweat mm -hmm. without question. Yeah. Uh, and so that always uh, starts to alleviate symptoms. And so a very important point I need to make about that is the things that I advise my patients are not masking your symptoms. There's a, always a little bit of a cause for concern with that. You're not masking anything. You're helping your body deal with it. Yeah. Uh, which is very different. Than, very, very different. When then taking like, you know, uh, cold and flu medicine that is making you not have mucus anymore, it's masking it. It's right. Not, it's not helping your right. body fight it. Correct. And then I also have some helpful videos on, on, on YouTube that we have, uh, which have some have been taken down because they're following CDC guidelines, which is with the American Medical Association, as the unproven treatments. Well, a matter of fact, they are proven and they show to help alleviate symptoms um, whether you have a cold, a flu, or, or you know other kind of issues going on, uh, which you know hot water is one of them. 
uh, doing a steam inhalation to help alleviate respiratory and throat issues where you boil hot water and you, um, you make a ginger water from ginger root, which is very helpful. Uh -huh. And you get that water with the ginger in it or just plain hot water and you put your towel over your head in the, with, with the plastic bowl and you inhale. And you mm. help to inhale all of that uh, to help loosen mucus. Yeah. All right. And so that, again, that doesn't mask symptoms, but it helps manage because uh, we've had some patients who have pre existing respiratory problems consistently. And so their mucus really builds up fast, mm -hmm. or they have allergies or asthma. So to help process a little bit of this, break up the mucus, because you need to break up the damp and the phlegm that's accumulating. You don't gotcha. want that getting into your lower respiratory tract to create pneumonia. Right now, it's stuck in the upper respiratory tract. Uh, the other thing we do is inhaling, inhaling garlic, fresh crushed garlic. Okay. It's an old remedy, and it, a lot of you who are involved in the health uh, aspects, you know, uh, know garlic has a lot of helpful, beneficial properties for the immune system. Yeah. Antiviral, antiparasitic, antibacterial, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I eat garlic like crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, me too as well, and then you have a nice odor after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, but here's the thing, the important part with Chinese medicine is understood is you can't cook your garlic. If oh. you're introducing garlic into your diet, please make sure it's raw, like crushed at least. You know, you can put it into salad, you can uh, just crush it and put it in with uh, whatever marinades, but after. You don't want to cook it with your marinades, you don't want... You can still do that, you know, if you like the flavor, but to get the... Benefits. Medicinal properties, it can't be cooked because those get degraded. Yeah, I've heard that, but you yeah. can do it. You can still eat cooked garlic. Yeah, you just totally. have to eat the raw one too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and what we do is very simple. We crush the little bit of garlic, we put it in a spoon or in your hand, and you inhale. You inhale the fumes. And the fumes. Just the fumes. Just the fumes of the garlic. You can do both, right? Um, and that's great for someone who's in, you know, bedridden you know, mm. or something, or anyone, in fact, but, you know, who have difficult swallowing or have issues with their gut going on, uh, you can just inhale the fumes to help get it into the upper respiratory tract. Interesting. Right. But you still then also want to eat it, though, too. But You this can is, eat this it if you can stomach with, it. It's okay, yeah. You but know. this is to help with the respiratory. Correct, so. yeah. The steaming uh, hot water with the respiratory, uh, just be careful. All of this, right, anything hot, just be careful about burning yourself, you know, yeah. common sense. Um, and, and so these are the things you can do. Having fresh ginger tea also is very helpful because okay. it is warming. It helps with any nausea because dampness can create nausea in the body too, or diarrhea or nausea. And so ginger is known to help kind of calm down nausea and help the stomach get warm. Mm -hmm. You know, from a cold stomach and cold spleen. Yeah. So that's also helpful. And usually you just need like the size of a thumb of your ginger root. And here's a little hack. You don't need to peel your ginger root in order to make the tea. You can just, you're in a hurry, just go ahead and cut it, dice it, slice it up, put it in the water and decoct it for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, on, you know, once you bring it to a boil, let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes. And then just strain it out and use a strainer. And you, you know, you don't have yeah. to waste your time peeling it because you know it's fine yeah yeah and then you slowly sip your ginger it'll be strong if it's if the ginger uh is too strong for you or your child if you decide to give it to them um you can add a little rock sugar okay uh, a little bit of honey but rock sugar is, is a little bit more helpful but you can also add honey as well okay uh, it's not a problem uh just to help with you know being able to take it down Got you. Yeah. And what else? What, is there anything else that you recommend? Uh, well, um, I mean... And then you were talking about uh, Chinese herbs. Yes. So medicine. with that, uh, when we are helping our patients, we have about four categories, so to speak, uh, uh, or uh, formulas. We have our in, uh, you know, preventative types of formulas, as we call them, which are helping the immune system. Uh, and they're a modification of several formulas mm -hmm. um, to help uh, the spleen, to help the lungs, to help the blood clotting issues that can formulate because of dampness, uh, can help with the foggy memory, the, the, the GI uh, symptoms, uh, and then also benefiting the throat. You know, okay. A lot of these herbs already have and have been identified to have antiviral, antibacterial properties in them. And so we have these formulas that are taken on a daily basis. Um, we actually help a lot of frontline workers, and so they are taking these herbs on a daily basis to help 
keep their immune system strong. It helps them with their energy. It helps them with their mental clarity and uh, gives them more confidence. Uh, is there any negative side effects? I mean, right now with the formula, we have not reported any. It is a very fairly safe formula. Um, okay. So it has all this upside of increasing your immune system, yes. giving you energy, all this stuff, yes. but not really any downside. So there always is a possibility of side effects. The human body is so complex, so we can't say no. There's no side effects. All right, that would be. But right incorrect. now, not, none reported. As so right. far from who we have been helping, no, we have not been reported. Um, which kind of brings me on an important topic: is you know this formula is a custom tailored formula, and mm -hmm. it has been tested. It's not the first time. This this types of formula have been used. You know, this has been used for generations and generations, different combinations of these herbs together. But it is important not to self-medicate with Chinese herbal medicine. Mm. You need the guidance of a TCM physician or herbalist uh, who has been trained. Because there are some herbs that when you take too long or you take incorrectly can drive your pathogen further in the body or aggravate symptoms further. Uh, we hear it a lot, you know, there's some herbs that I don't want to talk about them because I don't want people going out and trying to buy yeah. them, but there's some formulas or single herbs that people have been saying, yeah, they're really good, and they go and buy them, but if you start taking these too long, some can cause diarrhea, some can cause constipation after you've been taking it too long, which is also not good, some can cause some issues with your throat, some can cause chills to occur in the body, hmm. which then lowers your immune system. So. It's still medicine. Chinese medicine is a, you know, is a valid medicine system, and there are always cautions, and you always need the guidance of a professional and licensed physician when you are helping yourself. Yeah. You know, these self-help tips—they're such low risk that it's safe. You know, these are natural methods. This is food, right? This water, garlic is a food. Ginger is a food. They're, you know, yeah, they're safe for the most part, right? Uh, but Chinese herbal medicine is particular. Yeah. Still, it's still a medicine, you know. Um, there's interactions with medications as well. So we go over that with our patients. What are you taking right now, Western medicine-wise? And we see if there's any contraindications. We have to lower some herbs in the formula to offset, say, some heart medications or some other uh, anti-seizure medications someone might be on. Some herbs need to be adjusted because you still need the benefit of that herb, but you can't have too much because it can have a reaction. Makes sense. And that's very important. Um, and I wish uh, I could communicate more to other uh, MDs and physicians about that uh, to have their, you know, to let them be reassured that we're aware of this for our patients and for what their care is. And we are always trying to work together constantly because yeah. patients are number one. Everything we do is about taking care of you guys and how to help you, right? That's beautiful. Um, Which sometimes you don't get <laughs> everywhere and that's that's for sure you know yes. like and i'm not gonna anything in particular but you know there's a it's it's really relieving to have you and your best health be mm. the priority where i think a lot of people uh have had experiences where maybe they're just feel like a number or they're not giving as much time or care, you know, as, as might be. And this can be in any area of life. That doesn't even have to be in health and medicine. That can be wherever, you know, um, as we get into this detached society that we're in. <laughs> yeah, and it's become more prevalent now with the crisis that's at hand. You know. Yeah. Um, the, the few other formulas that we have, I should just briefly touch. We have our second stages, our first and second stages, which are the mild symptoms of, of what's been going on. And so we have special formulations for that at a base. But again, when the patient comes to us, their formula is then adjusted for them, okay. for whatever issues they have. So it works together to help them recover. And these formulas are short uh, durations. It's like three days or five days, and then it's adjusted again based on your symptoms. It's not what happened before, it's what's going on now, and we adjust the formula, mm. all right? And when we do our telehealth, I am with a, I'm communicating with a patient twice a day, sometimes three, because symptoms change so quickly with this virus. Wow. And so I'm constantly monitoring them and uh, applying, giving advice and reassurances. I've, you know, really gotten into the whole kind of therapy role as a, a, you know, from psychology reasons, everyone's stressed and anxious. And so I'm doing my best to help keep things calm and level and just kind of go step by step on things you can do. And I'm just really grateful that they keep working, yeah. you know, 
we've had some scares. People have call, I've asked them to call 911 because I'm not around to see what's going on. And a lot of it has been more of an anxiety or a panic attack. I'm not there physically to be present, to have my energy help calm things. And what I'm ex communicating with them isn't doing enough. But when they get outdoors and are around someone else, they see that they got their pulse oximeter checked by the EMT, their heart rate, their auscultation was all fine, and they're okay and they're nice and calm again. Mm. And then they, and then they develop a little bit more confidence in the medicine. Because that, that's been a challenge, right? Uh, helping patients who have never had any contact with Chinese herbal medicine or yeah. the methods. Um, and so I do, our, I do my best to help guide you through the process. So once we have these first two levels, um, these are the most important because this is the type of help that's going to really improve your chances of keeping you out of the hospital. Yeah. Because once patients get into the hospital, you're out of our hands. We have no authority to go in there to help despite our efforts to actually um, supply our help. We've offered you know, to the state, to the governor, to hospitals to go in and help, but there are these rules uh, and it's just not done. Our system is not set up for it. Okay. And this help has been offered by doctors of Chinese medicine who have experience in hospitals in China who are practicing here. They have experience and there is ability to help, um, but it's just not set up that way. So the sooner that we can get to our patients and help them, the better chances they are to stay out of the hospital. Mm. Again, because, and even with the initial stages of liquid and filling up in the lungs where you, you'll have like, uh, we've helped some nurses um, that have know how to auscultate with the stethoscope and they're like, I hear sounds and they're like, oh my gosh. And they go and they get a chest x-ray and things are okay. But those are the initial signs, but they continue the herbal formula and all of that clears up because again, the herbs in these formulas are helping the lung, the lung chi, the lung fluid build up to clear it to strengthen and to circulate in yeah, here. Yeah, they're helping your body do what it's yes. designed to do. Heal um, itself. Correct. And so uh, uh, the you know they're very grateful for all of the help. You know, it's such a strange you know process to go through. Anyways, uh, they're not used to those kind of results. Yeah. Uh, and we're very grateful that it helps in this way. You know, and it's not guessing, and it's not like this is the first time they've these herbs have worked in this way. They've been working this way for centuries. And there's yeah, lots it just of might data. just be a different virus, but it's mm -hmm. the same type of when you're looking at it as that cold yeah. wet and you're looking at it mm -hmm. as the symptoms that it's causing. Yeah, because in the lungs it turns into heat really quickly. Uh, and so you need to clear the heat and you need to dry up the damp, you need to transform the phlegm. And so what's interesting is there are herbs in our formulas that are only allowed to be prescribed or uh, purchased by licensed physicians. So you can't find these on the market because mm -hmm. they're FDA regulated. You know, and all of these herbs are, are go through the FDA process. They're they're tested, they're checked, and and so you know we have confidence in them from our suppliers. Beautiful. Um, and the next thing is the recovery stage. When you have more serious symptoms or mild symptoms, there are still things that are happening, like the long haulers, right? Yeah, which you're hearing more and more of those cases yes. where people are like, three months later and I'm still having symptoms. Yes, this is signs of spleen deficiencies and weakness and other, uh, other kind of symptoms. Chinese medicine helps with this very effectively. Uh, and it can be done through acupuncture and herbs because technically you've tested negative and you still test negative. So you're legally allowed to come to the, the clinic and get help. Mm -hmm. uh, wherever you are with an acupuncturist in your state or, or a Chinese physician. Um, to help these symptoms, it's very important. Um, and usually you need herbs, you know, because you need to give something to the body to help overcome something like that. Sometimes it depends, you know, the acupuncture works in conjunction with that nice. to, to speed up that process. But the other thing that is more concerning is those who are finished with being on a ventilator, they've gone through that process and by miracle they survived, right? And they're out of the hospital, they're on inhalers to and nebulizers to help open up their, their bronchial airways and get oxygen into the lungs to help that repair process. They're on you know oxygen support daily. But what's not going on is there's no help with the circulation in the lung getting the repair of the fibrotic tissue that's in the lung and the alveoli that's been damaged. Mm -hmm. It becomes scar tissue. And our herbs are known to help with the repair process in that part of the lungs. So we can help patients recover in a shorter period of time to prevent complications in the future, such as 
yeah. COPD, like chronic obstructive pulmonary kind of diseases and, and whatnot. And that's very important for recovery, you know. And everyone deserves to know about their medical options. So if you know or uh, in an area that has a Chinese medical physician, please go seek them out. Ask them questions. They'll be happy to answer anything. And that where you can want. they find you? Uh, oh, <laughs> of course. Uh, well, we have two locations here in Southern California. One is in Encino in the San Fernando Valley uh, by the 405 and 101 freeway. And we have one in Ventura County in Moore Park where Master U is, um, has been practicing for years. Um, and I must say, I wouldn't be as where I am without his guidance and help because it's been a huge learning curve for me. You know, after going through school and all the training we have, nothing prepares you for this. <laughs> but his mastery and understanding of herbs and symptoms and issues, because he is known for treating a lot of the most rare cases, bizarre cases, difficult cases, and all sorts of health conditions, his understanding is so quick and fast, and he's been teaching me all along, because we are, you're not just, when, you, when we're getting help with our patients, you're not just getting me, you're getting him. So you're mm -hmm. getting two physicians helping you, uh, a veteran, and you know I'm I'm you know in my first year practicing and, and whatnot. But uh, uh, with that comes you know extra confidence with his help and guidance. Yeah. Uh, so it makes all the difference. It really does uh, in how we can help our patients. You know. Um, and you're doing things uh, telephonically too, so that if people are testing positive, and then they're able to what pick up the herbs at, at your clinic or yes. have them mailed, or how Correct. does that work? Exactly. There's mailing options. There's delivery options. I've de de delivered them um, after hours, in between hours. We have people come up uh, to hand them off outside the door, and of course, wearing masks and keeping things uh, clean and distant. And we are uh, we do video. Uh, telemedicine and then obviously uh, private text messaging to stay up with symptoms. We do tongue diagnosis which tells us so much about the body. It mm. is such a blessing to have that diagnostic feature in Chinese medicine which is so right for telehealth. Yeah. Because it tells us so much without having to have labs done or sent or this time wait, you know, waiting for results. We know very clearly this is what's going on in the lungs, this is what's going on in the liver, the kidney, the bladder, the stomach, all, all on the surface of your tongue. That's great. And then we see the changes right away. We see the changes when they, you know, someone drinks hot water, their tongue has changed once they broke a sweat and their symptoms changed. It shows up on their tongue. Wow. The body doesn't lie at that point. And the, and the Chinese have, in their medicine, have figured out very clear what has been going on. There's no more guesswork. And uh, I guess you could say, um, I like to liken uh, Chinese medicine uh, to Sherlock Holmes, as my mentor has described. We are, uh, uh, you know, this kind of thinking is applied in Chinese medicine. We're like detectives, you know, and, but everything has been already laid out. Hmm. And so you just need to pull from all of the symptoms to formulate a diagnosis. And from that diagnosis, then you treat very directly. Love and you it. don't have to guess. It's just after that, it's your experience, your expertise, and, and whatnot that really hone that down and, and achieve the results that you need. You know, we have expected results with our herbs, and it's not going the right way. Something else is going on, or and whatnot. And we we quickly address that, and so that's it. That's beautiful. And I hope that everybody that's tuning in and, and getting this is feeling a little calmer, a little less anxious about this virus and also about your general health, that there are always other options and different ways to take control of your, your health and different simple things like just drinking hot water that can make a big impact and difference immediately. Yes. Right? Yes. Is there anything else that you want to share before we wrap up today? Uh, yeah, um, something that I'm demonstrating here, which is the Tui Na. So the other thing that I'm passionate about uh, is the is pediatrics, actually. Okay. And so, um, you know, very briefly, I grew up as a sick child. You know, I was born premature, had allergies and digestive problems uh, and whatnot, and now I don't deal with. 90% of those. Mm. And what got me over all of that was the daily tween ah training that I learned from my mentor. It got rid of my issues that were constant respiratory infections, throat infections, allergies to smoke. Four years ago, I would not have been able to burn this and stay in this environment with you. I would have started having a sneezing fit. <laughs> I would have had to take Benadryl or go to the ENT doctor and get a B12 injection. 
because wow. that's how bad it got me. I wouldn't be around your dogs either because I would just, the hair that would be here, I'm so sensitive. And then I would be well, sick for several days. They're <laughs> hyperallergenic. <laughs> that's I great. That is a good I one. I what you say, you know, but go ahead. So, you know, I went through a process of a year's time with the Twina to help recover this. And I had been to everyone under the sun, literally, over a 20-year period. Even martial arts, even Qigong, even meditations, uh, Reiki, cranial sacral, uh, homeopathic ENTs, allergy injection shots, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, things managed for me a little bit, but it was, I was still reactive constantly. Wow. And uh, I had my dairy allergy and my gluten uh, sensitivity. Uh, non, I believe it's the non-gluten uh, sensitivity uh, yeah. allergy, not celiac or anything. However, my father had celiac. Uh, nevertheless, I don't have my dairy allergy anymore, and I can I don't have any issues with gluten, and apples, or carrots, or some of the other foods that would cause me severe stomach pains and cramps. Uh, my bowel movements are healthy and regular on a daily basis, as opposed to the chronic constipation I used to deal with for decades, which was not pleasant. Um, you know, the lung and the large intestines are a yin yang pair. So when I was going through medical school and learning about all of this, I was like, oh my God, look at that. I have my respiratory problems and I have my digestive <laughs> problems. So I was textbook. How do you go about helping that? And I learned that even the most amount of acupuncture and herbs, they can only do so much because you can't come in every day for acupuncture and you can't be on herbs every day. Yeah. You just can't. The, the body... Uh, herbs are still a type of medicine, right? And they, they need to be balanced. You need to be on them for a little bit, and your body needs to just take over its natural processes. That's always the goal with Chinese medicine. Help the body get back to its original kind of functioning mm -hmm. so that it just takes over what it's meant to do. Well, Tui Na can be done every day, as many times as you want. And you just need to know what to do. Know that you're massaging down your stomach channel to help your stomach and your energy and to help your large intestines and small intestine. Know that you, know, you need to massage your liver channel on the inside of your leg in order to help the stress, to help the liver heat. You know, just by doing this, no one would need to do any of the cellular reducing. <laughs> that was another thing we had talked about. Um, because you're clearing liver heat, you're clearing these organs and you're facilitating enhanced blood circulation to them that they have been otherwise deprived of, which causes you know, path, yeah. you know uh, symptoms and whatnot. And so there's areas to do that you know, involve the liver, the spleen, and the kidneys, which are very three major important yin organs in our body. But with that, I, w I have an eight-year-old daughter, and I have learned over the last four years how to help take care of her with Tui Na, Chinese medical massage, from my mentor's uh, teaching. Um, because I'm, I'm trained as a general practitioner, so I still deal with pediatrics and geriatrics, you know, mm -hmm. all the way, the whole age spectrum. We mostly treat children with the Tui Na as opposed to the needles, uh, sometimes herbs when it's necessary, but the Tui Na takes care of a lot. It just takes due diligence. Uh, some is faster than the other. Kids respond very quickly. So we help clear fevers with just a little bit of a massage, uh, which is just done on the back of the neck. We help digestive issues with things like this. We help colic problems go away because colic is a misunderstanding, uh, uh, is, is poorly understood even in medicine of why it's really occurring and how to really go about helping resolve it. There's lots of helpful methods here and there. Chinese medicine knows exactly why it's happening and how to go about correcting it. It's just not taught in the, uh, over here. It's taught in China, and the doctors over there teach their p p the parents how to help their children with the massage every day. And their results change very fast. So that's part of what I, I, I've been helping my daughter through all of that and seeing her thrive as a result. Initially having some allergies with our cat that we got a couple years ago, my mm -hmm. first cat ever, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, I mean, I snuggle with him all the time uh, and no, no allergies, no reactions. My daughter started to get some, got some hives, you know, snuggles up with him, still get some, some from time to time, but I massage her points and help her immune system, you know, down the spine, on here in the pericardium points to clear heat and her rashes go away. Do you have any videos or anything to teach some of yeah, these things? Yeah, we, we do. Uh, so in the midst of all of the pandemic happening, I was starting to launch an online course 
coursework, and it's too enough for kids. Um, and right now, I have several lessons up there. One of which is free. When all of the COVID was happening, mm -hmm. we got uh, we got a request from some nurses in pediatrics. They were seeing cases. Uh, and they're like, what can you do? What can you share with us to help? And so Master you and I, he had come up with a protocol, and there's an eight sequence protocol of Twina massage to help every symptom that has occurred in the body. So there's a spinal one to help with uh, the immune system. There's one for the fever at the top of the neck. There's areas for the lung, the heart, the pericardium, uh, the digestive system, the spleen. And there's a protocol to follow, which I filmed with my daughter, and you can just play that thing and follow along, literally. And I go through the whole movement. I don't. Okay, we'll link that down yeah. below so people have it easy to find. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. It's just symptom management and helping the body get stronger. Uh, and so I have other tutorials, which is uh, one is treating fevers in children. Uh, one is helping uh, colicky babies. And the other one, uh, which was spontaneous, was my daughter got pink eye while we were in quarantine. <laughs> and so I documented the whole process of her getting pink eye and the tweena that I did, and a day and a half later, the pink eye being completely gone. Wow. Just from doing points and never touching the eye. We had, uh, you know, everything was all stressed out. We called the telemedicine doctors. They were over busy. We didn't hear from them for like a couple of days. You know, it was just the, what was going on. It was overwhelming. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I took that opportunity to share that, and so that's available. And we're slowly trying to build more content to share because we're going to go over digestive uh, issues, food allergies, how to help the children with that. Um, and, and all uh, of these things, they can be done on and applied to a child, but they can mm -hmm. be applied to a, an adult too, just as effectively, right? Yes and no. Okay. That's an, I'm glad you brought that up. A child's physiology is different than an adult's. Okay. Still, we're humans, yes, but they behave differently. The organs are immature, so there are certain things we do with children that it won't work as effective with adults. Okay. And there's certain conditions, you know, uh, they change very rapidly in a child, they don't in an adult, and there's a lot more uh, examples, but I'm glad you brought that up because it is still different. Yeah, because I mean, you would think that a lot of people would be like, oh, okay, I'll apply that to my boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever yes. the case may be, and I'll get these results. <laughs> For the most part, yes. So a spinal massage absolutely helps anyone. The fever helps anybody. You know, um, there's points on the bottom of the foot for the kidney, for hormone balancing. Yes, that helps uh, others as well. But you have to do it a little bit differently in an adult than in a child. A child requires just gentle touching and massaging because they're so brand new. Uh, yeah. Even an eight-year-old, you know, so brand new, you know. Uh, and they respond very quickly. You know, so it, it just takes light touching as opposed to with an adult, you have to apply more pressure. Uh, and what not to elicit more responses. And it's always about combinations too. It's never just one thing. Yeah. It's always about working together synergistically to achieve the results you need. So. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been such a pleasure, Anthony. I think that you've, you've provided so much knowledge and insight for our viewers and we will link them up with your website, your clinics, and also some of these videos. Um, if you had to leave somebody with uh, one last thing, what would it be? Um, you know what? I have to come back to my, where is my comb? Uh, this probably has to be one of the most important things I say. Uh, I don't know where it is. I lost it already. <laughs> okay. Um, doing your, uh, we are dealing with such a stressful moment. So many dynamics, so many issues going on. Everything has been amplified, right? You know, all of, all of what's going on. Um, taking care of yourself is very important, number one. But learning how to do it correctly is even more important, you know. Uh, a lot of your viewers are healers as well. They're in yoga and Reiki, right, and other mm -hmm. psychic healing. You know, my, what I'm sharing here helps also healers. And I think that's important, too, to understand is when you're a healer, too, you're, you're sharing your energy. Yeah. You need to take care of your energy as well. So adopting some of these methods can reinforce your own energy, protect your energy, and also help you deal with what you've been absorbing. Because you're absorbing all the stress and anxiety of, of the world right now. Yeah. You know? And it's very important that you keep helping others because we desperately need it. 
you know, and, yeah. and to be persistent with it, you know, to not like all of a sudden get sick and then not be available for the people that need you the most, but you know, be able to persevere and, and endure. So, um, you know, I have this video on my Instagram account, which is the, the head gua sha. I think this is one of the most helpful things for anybody. You know, before you go into a meditation, before you do a healing session, to help stimulate your body's organs. You know, I have it on the video where it's just for calming, and it's true, it sends your chi down. And pregnant women are not allowed to do this because it's sending your chi down and you don't need to send this chi that is precious in here down, okay? That's, that can cause a spontaneous abortion. So please, if you're pregnant, you can't do the head gua sha, but you can lightly touch things. You can only do things gently and lightly, okay? Mm -hmm. You can do gentle scratching, but no going down. For anyone else, going down is very important because it sends that, all that rising chi, that liver chi stagnation going up, it sends it down to soothe things out. And when you then alter the physiology in your body, then you create better conditions for your meditation practice, your yoga practice, uh, or dealing with clients mm -hmm. and whatnot. And then you can do it in between, right? You just finish with the client and you, know, you absorbed all of this energy and you got a little stressed out or even with your home life, you get a little stressed yeah. out. It just helps to go and do the comb down or just scratch your head. And if you have curly, beautiful hair, just you know, figure out a way to do it. You can rock back and forth on the comb. There's lots of alternatives or just using your finger, you know, mm -hmm. going down and scratching. You're going to find tender spots, but you're not hurting yourself. Okay. You're clearing, and you will see that as you do this more regularly, you will feel less tenderness, all right? Uh, there are some days where, man, some spots on my liver really hurt up here on my head, um, but then I, I feel better. Yeah. You know, and then the next day it's less tender and then my tongue changes and I notice that, yeah, that is something that is obviously helping the organ itself. Wow. Um, so that's amazing. That's probably the, the most helpful thing I can share right now, especially for the healers out there, because we need you. We need all of you. And uh, well, we need everyone else, too. You know, and so any little thing that can help you, uh, because we have people who are essential workers and teachers and, and educators and policemen and, and, and nurses and And, and even and people everyone, that are right? taking care of their family or Correct, you know. yeah, caregivers and then even the people who are being taken care of. All of this is helpful for them. Yeah. Uh, you just have to trust in it because um, what I'm explaining is not new by any means. It has been time tested for generations upon generations. So it is valid and it, is, it works. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Anthony. Yeah, thank you too. <laughs> thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you everybody for joining. And um, yeah, please join us next time and make sure to check out some of Anthony's videos and reach out to him directly if you have any further questions. All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Bye if you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself. My name is Lily and I'm an energy healer at Liberate Hollywood. I practice pranic healing and I practice theta healing and I'm also psychic and clairvoyant. I became a healer when I started looking for things, um, certain practices, certain types of therapy to help me heal myself. So at one point in my life, I was going through a really, really, really low point, um, crying all the time, feeling super depressed, feeling really, really stuck. I constantly prayed to God for an answer and I was given really, really concrete steps and one of them was learning pranic healing. And so when I started applying those techniques for myself, I started learning and, and really seeing how my life was changing so drastically and was volunteering one day and then people just wanted to pay me for my services and that's just kind of how my journey started. So when people come see me for a healing, they're looking for a variety of things. One, they want to feel better right away. 
So part of the energy healing is releasing any kind of stress or any kind of um, anger that they might fe be feeling or any kind of depression that they may be feeling. But the, what they also want to see is long-term effects. So I'll always say, I'm going to give you homework. You have to apply the homework. The energy healing will also will adjust what your chakra system says, but your thought forms, your behavior will dictate how long the healing lasts. Theta healing is also an energy healing modality that works with uh, reprogramming belief systems in the subconscious mind. So by doing certain techniques, we tap into Creator and we, uh, Creator will uh, reprogram or do the healing for us. Um, I would just act as a witness to it. It's a really beautiful, powerful technique and, and it really complements um, the readings or other healing modalities. In all forms of energy healing, Regardless of what the practitioner says, it is up to the client to change their life. As a practitioner, we're serving as a channel or as, a, as an instrument for God to do the work, but it is up to the client to, to make better choices. And so as a practitioner, we'll often tell you what those choices are, um, but it's up to you to be held accountable. If you'd like to book a session with me, you can call Liberate Hollywood or Liberate Emporium and we can meet either in person or on the phone or, or via Skype and uh, come with lots of questions. We're going to ask God directly for you what um, he has in store for you. Um, if you have anything that you want to work on energetically, physically, mentally, emotionally, etherically, any whatever it is that you want to work towards, whether it's your career or your relationship, abundance is there for you. So all we gotta do is tap in. I love this work and I'm here to support you um, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks.